Trying to think of an idea for the podcast. Can't come up with a goddamn thing. We could always do a pitch meeting. Man, we could probably just sing. What about Milos and Borshti? They were put in a homeland cell. What we could maybe get Jay Courtney. This podcast's gone to hell. The theme song just stopped playing. Oh, are we not still are we not still doing that? <laughs> oh, <I guess> not. <laughs> oh, it was better than Milos and Borfti. Yeah. Yeah, right. right? right? Arrested by Homeland. We'll have to uh we're, we'll have to We're uh, in Canada. Yeah. I, I don't know how the red tape around that really worked. But mm. uh, well, well hopefully we'll find out how Montrose got away. <laughs> Well, maybe, yeah, I mean, if he doesn't make it to the end of this episode, I mean, he's got about 90 minutes to get here. So, I mean, is he on the road right now? Montrose? Yeah, is he on the, is he in the, is he in the car? Is he on the road? Is he on the way? I think he'd have to be, I hope he's not hitchhiking because he doesn't have opposable thumbs. Oh, shit. Well, maybe he caught a ride with the Muppets or something. Well, that's a possibility. Oh, 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 oh. oh Rolf! <laughs> Oh, this is a um, this is uh, what is described in many circles as, as a podcast. Yes, and uh, I'm Brendan. I'm Nathan. It is, of course, a podcast called "What Were They Thinking," where we talk about bad to at le- the very least questionable uh, movies. But yeah, we are talking about a movie that Nathan selected this week called "The Long Kiss Goodnight," our fourth Rennie Harlan film. Fourth, man. yeah, That's right, crazy. <laughs> And so are I, his movies. I, I really thought I really thought Michael Bay would have pulled ahead at some point, but it's <laughs> it's looking like a I mean, no, it's Rennie Harlan's in the lead by two. Um so but um we're not gonna talk about this movie alone. No. We're we we've got a uh, a guest on the line in the studio, both at the same time. It doesn't make sense. Don't worry about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the manana na now of the What Were They Thinking podcast, Stephen from Everything I Learned from Movies. Hey, everybody. I'm glad to be here on Four Screen and Country to talk about the long kiss goodnight. I had uh, no idea. Rennie Hardland was British, though. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> you, did, you didn't? Okay, so as a fan of Deep Blue Sea, you didn't know that the director of that movie was British? Come on, Steve. Yeah, or, you know, Die Hard 2. Nathan's or, favorite uh, Die Hard. Yeah. Skip Trace. <laughs> oh, God. I, didn't, I forgot that movie existed. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone did, don't worry. <laughs> Cliffhanger? Yeah! You mean Skip Trace starring Eve Torres? Um, and Johnny Knoxville? Yeah, and, uh, I think the real... And uh, what's that Jackie Chan looking guy? Uh, Jackie, Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan? Oh. <laughs> old, old Jackie Chan. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so Long Kiss Can I. So before we get into it, I just have a little note about the uh, about the movie, um, the budget, box office, and so forth. Because okay. um, this movie was a... So this is 1996, I believe. This mm-hmm. is a $60 million budgeted movie, so it's quite pretty sizable for the time. Um, and now, now a big budget movie is like $180 million or something like that. Yeah. Uh, $60 million. It made 95 Um, However, apparently not a hit. 
uh, with the ninety-five million dollars. So I guess that's some... horseshit. Well, <clears throat> well, here's the thing about that: the uh, previous uh, Rennie Harlan, <laughs> Gina Davis joint was mm-hmm. a cutthroat island where they lost like a hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, at least at least they got a chance with this one well... to come back. <laughs> if you marry me, I will make you a fabulous pirate. I think this is still like I think this is still leaving a sour taste in people's mouths at the time. Like the the kind of uh, box office failure of Cutthroat Island only ten months before this. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, but according to writer Shane Black, he has a different theory um, on why this movie failed. He said it might have made more money, but it had to be a woman. I don't know. The, I I feel that the fact that it was a woman is what made it interesting to me at the time. Absolutely. I love this movie. I saw it in theaters. I've seen it dozens of times. I have several copies of it. I fucking love this movie. I mean, I think if you switch the roles and you have Sam Jackson as the badass and Gina Davis just kind of as the, the you know, the the side Comic piece relief. or whatever. Um, it's just a pretty side standard... Sidekick. Sidekick. Side Friend, piece, sidekick. A side whatever. piece is entirely different, buddy. <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, if know, they switched it, it up, um, it, just be, it just becomes a typical 90s action movie. Yep. I think with them doing the role reversal, that's exactly, that's, that's exactly what made it interesting. Um, so, sorry, Shane Black. <laughs> You're wrong. And You're not wrong. just this time. Nope. We've Several. seen Predator. Yeah. <laughs> or The Predator. And starring Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson and a few other people. But Nathan, mm-hmm. you go ahead. You tell us what this movie's all about. Well, this movie is all about uh, a super spy assassin uh, by the name of Charlene Baltimore, who develops amnesia uh, and takes on her undercover persona of Samantha Kane. She makes a life. Uh, living as Samantha as a school teacher has a kid uh, and then one Christmas that's why it's picked because it's a Christmas movie and if anybody who says otherwise can I'll fight you uh, one Christmas uh, she get takes a bump in the noggin from a car crash and uh, her memories start coming back and all the people who thought she was dead uh, are now coming after Charlie Baltimore uh, because they see her on the TV as uh, Samantha Kane, as Mrs. Claus, and uh, mayhem ensues. Uh, we have a fun sidekick in sidekick in Samuel Jackson. <laughs> Side piece, yep. <laughs> uh, and uh, as you said, uh, there are quite a few uh, not so brightly burning stars, but there's this has got a pretty solid cast. We got. Uh, Greg Bierko, uh, Brian Cox, who David hasn't, Morse. who by the way, I was astonished to find out that Brian Cox is not American. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all this time oh. I thought I think every movie I've ever seen with Brian Cox, he's doing an American accent, and I just mm. thought for the longest time he's an American. No, he's a goddamn chameleon, is what he is. Mm. Acting genius. In fact, I feel we should hold him up on some sort of pedestal. Oh, BuzzFeed's telling me. Oh. No, Brian Cox is <laughs> Not cool. Brian Cox, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mother. Surely <laughs> Gina Davis won't. Damn it, what? Gina. What? Gina? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Well, I guess it's Greg Bierko because he's not a star. So. <laughs> oh, Gina Davis' horror stories from the set of Glow. <laughs> but yes, it's a good cast. Yeah, it's a good cast. Yeah. And the David movie Morse. is full of intrigue uh, mm. and uh, all kinds of uh, terrorists' plots and foiling and, and deep state stuff and all the things that we thought was fodder for re- Ridiculous movies and not things that people would take seriously and say in political discourse nowadays. Or two-hour YouTube videos made by usernames with numbers in their name. Right, exactly. <laughs> so let's uh, let's just jump into this. All right, jump into the pool, guys. Everybody well, got their well, swim trunks? We're going to start off with uh, an, an interesting credit opening. I thought you were going to say interesting tidbit. I got excited. No, no, interesting credit opening because... Oh, okay. Every we've, we're getting like 
she's practicing the name uh, Samantha Kane and Charlie Baltimore writing the names, both the names. Uh, we're getting a kind of a recap that is shot in uh, a negative type treatment mm-hmm. uh, before we go past all that and we open on uh, a Santa Claus parade. Uh, so right away we've established that this is indeed a Christmas movie. <laughs> Woo! Take that, Christmas of the Cranks. Right. <laughs> yeah, Christmas of the Cranks, less of a Christmas movie. <laughs> yes. And uh, she, Gina Davis, she's given the voiceover intro so you know who she is. Uh, she's Samantha Kane. She was born six years ago on a beach in New Jersey, which, you know what? She's full grown. That, that stands to reason mutants are born in New Jersey. So... Mm. She's also a teacher with amnesia, which is uh, questionable. I don't know. Oh, I mean, as long as she's got, uh, she said they said they have. She has focal grade amnesia, where she doesn't remember her life, but she remembers a lot of the knowledge, common knowledge mm-hmm. that she has. I guess. Okay, what what is she teaching? Just elementary school kids, I think. So I think she's like an English teacher. <laughs> I don't know. I lo- I lo- I laughed at the opening when she said I was born six years ago. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, this is the best miscasting ever. <laughs> Take that, Jack. And, and yeah. that's only because Julia Roberts did not get that gig as uh, Harriet Tubman. Oh my God! Oh, Can you believe? I mean, I'm not shocked. <laughs> I shouldn't say that I'm surprised because, yeah, Hollywood in the 90s, man. Oof. Yeah. I just, I kind of wanted that to, I kind of am sad that that never happened just to hold it up as an example of how fucking backwards they are sometimes. (laughs) Yep. Oh, and not even like her wearing blackface, just doing the role as a white woman as Harriet Tubman. (sighs) 12 Years a Bride? Yeah, but she's right off to build the railroad. <laughs> oh, and for some reason, Michael Fassbender is still a racist slave owner in that movie. <laughs> I did think this was like a sultry romantic thriller, like Fatal Attraction style, based on that opening, though. Yes, and it is not. <laughs> no. That's why it was a little, like... I'm not quite sure what this is from the first few minutes. Because unlike Nathan and Steve, ladies and gentlemen, I had actually never seen this movie before. Oh, you poor Wow. Man. I'm glad yeah. we could do that for you. Well, look, luckily, right after her uh, backstory thing, we find out exactly what kind of movie this is. When we're introduced to Samuel L. Jackson as Mitch Hennessy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> He's a shakedown con artist slash public in- or private investigator. Yeah, and I, I, you know what? Okay, so obviously we're going to talk about some insane things that happen in this movie. And it's obviously a very entertaining movie. But I got to say, like, I'm being 1,000% genuine. I think Sam Jackson, this might be his best acting I've ever seen. Second. It really is up there. Second best acting, I should say. I think I think in Django, that's his, like, perfor- career performance. But I think this is honestly, like, one of the best Sam Jackson performances I've ever seen. I think it. I, I really like it because it does demonstrate his ability to deliver comedy, and not in a oh, yeah, Nick yeah. Fury kind of way. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying anything against his other roles. He's great, but like this is very like um, he's playing kind of against the normal Sam Jackson badass type. Yeah, like yeah, he he, he talks like a badass, but he's kind of a schlub. Yep, <laughs> which is really uncharacteristic and a breath of fresh air yeah and i'm gonna say something controversial here i think it's also gina davis's best acting probably (laughs) i mean competition is uh cutthroat island Uh, beetlejuice you son of a bitch Eh. (laughs) oh kindly go (laughs) you can fucking leave (laughs) man to beetlejuice Oh. No, to, to Gina Davis in Beetlejuice. Yeah, she's That's great. That's what the man is, too. Yeah. Doesn't she play Beetlejuice? Am I remembering that wrong? <laughs> I, I thought it was... <laughs> I remember liking her uh, 
And then when I saw this movie, there was there's just something about her in this movie. I developed the hugest crush on her for the longest time. Well, so were you a bigger fan of uh, Samantha Kane or Charlie Baltimore? Oh, Charlie Baltimore all the way. Really? Really? Okay, I'm not a hard ass. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was a I was a Canaanite. Oh. Yeah, me too. Wait, wait, wait. I think that does mean something different than I think it does. Yeah, I mean, at this I point, mean, I think <laughs> Steve, I think we were into the Samantha Kane version more because of uh, who her father is, of course. Oh, of course, of course. Great thespian, Michael Kane. Uh, My cocaine, <laughs> Samantha Kane. <laughs> well, he was. Didn't Brian Cox say that he was a British operative? There you go. <gasps> Holy shit. Yeah? Irish. Irish, I think. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, they're all the same. Um, <laughs> Get at me, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, America, Canada, same thing. At E-I-L-F movies <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> well, you know, with with Homeland Security going to get Milos and Borsti in the opening song, I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, we meet Mitch Hennessy, and he is as... Uh, a shakedown artist. He's shaking mm. down uh, married men uh, who are hiring his his assistant as a prostitute, yeah. and then busting in before they get a chance to seal the deal. Mm-hmm. Um, he only has one assistant. Uh, he does, however, hire homeless men to be his assistant <laughs> detectives, yeah. and he can't even be bothered to teach them the Miranda rights. <laughs> but by the way, I want to know the backstory of his assistant, the the girl from uh, CSI New York or whatever, uh, Car- Karakinides, I think's her last name. Okay, I, I want I want to know the backstory of Trin though. Like, how is she in like for this? Like, no, no, you just let him get you know so close, and then I bust in and blah blah blah. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Uh, okay, All right. <laughs> she's had a hard life. Yeah, <laughs> I I did note that she had beautiful blue eyes. Mm. Uh, oh, one, yeah. one blue yeah, east true. and one blue west. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. He's not a wise shakedown artist by any stretch no. of the imagination. <laughs> no, I mean it's pretty established that he's kind of a low rent detective. Yes, yeah. she actually even says that in the opening voiceover before we meet him. Mm-hmm. She's like, I I hired the most expensive ones, and now I'm down to the dregs. It really doesn't matter. And then pff, smash cut to Sam Jackson. Yeah. They do have that awesome, he has that awesome line where he says, uh, uh, if he doesn't shut up, he'll stick him in a cell with uh, someone who will oh. fuck him in the ass. <laughs> and if my arrest gets thrown out for being too violent i will hire men to follow you around for five years to fuck you in the ass so if you're an ass fucking fan you keep on talking <laughs> well as much as we love this, this scene we, are, we i could move on talk about it for hours really <laughs> yeah oh th- wait this isn't the long kiss good night minute by minute podcast <laughs> it is not <laughs> all right next scene nathan what happens next well <laughs> the, the next thing we we get to see uh the uh, the party, because uh, you know we cut back to Samantha and them. They're uh, they've had a holiday party, and she's chastised one of the local children that if I catch you smoking, they'll never find the body. She's kind of joking, but later we find out that's a legitimate possibility. <laughs> uh, she drives. Uh, was it Earl? He's the the old guy, the drunk old guy. She's mm-hmm. she's driving him home, and he. I get that he's supposed to be, like, delightfully drunk, but he's gross. Uh, He tries to cop a feel. Uh, He asks them how often they put their fingers inside their hands and and pull them out. And she's like, we do that as much as possible. (laughs) Every chance we get. Yep. And then, oh dear, a deer. (laughs) (laughs) The best, like... The best, like, animatronic deer hit. Yeah, they hit a deer. Uh, It kicks her in the head, uh, and I believe it kicks Earl in the face. It causes Hmm. a car accident. She's thrown from the car. Don't know why she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Well, she's Uh, driving. She doesn't have time for that. (laughs) Right. 
And uh, uh, Earl is cooked because the car catches fire and he burns well, to death. I see. I I thought he was dead too, but like they don't ever mention it. I I feel it's safe to assume. Uh, but as Sam Jackson says, you know, when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and umption. <laughs> okay. Do you want to hear something crazy about that line though? What's that? I've never seen this movie, mm-hmm. and I've been saying I like I do say that line every once in a while, and I don't know if that like became popular because of this movie or whatever. Oh uh, no! It, it was it was out before the, this movie. Yeah. Okay, because I like I've definitely said it before, and I was like, "Oh, is this where it comes from?" <laughs> I uh, I often use a variation on it. Uh, mm. I often say, you know, when assuming you make an ass out of you and Ming, and he's a nice guy, I wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> Ming now when yeah. Uh, no. First off, not a he. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just assuming that's who Nathan was talking about. <laughs> no, I was oh, talking about uh, Ming. Oh, First, Ming! Flash! Ah, I gotcha. ah, it's another wrestling is. reference. Got secured. And I would not try to make an ass out of that man because he would tear my head off and eat yeah. my face. Anyways, long kiss, good night. <laughs> um... All right, so she fucking murks a deer. The deer mm-hmm. is still alive, yeah. and she breaks its neck. Yep, and then and then after that is the weirdest anti-smoking ad ever. Yeah, I will say, though, as far as dream sequences in a movie go, this one actually legitimately felt like it would have been somebody's dream. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, like it, yeah it is, everything it is was, kind of disconsorted. Yep. And, yeah. Yep. So good on you, Rennie. Good on you, bud. Rennie Harlan. Mm-hmm. Dream Master. <laughs> Rennie Harlan is Freddy Krueger. Oh, my God. I love that movie. <laughs> Next Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back here. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, Rennie. I kill you in your dreams. Uh, it's me, bitch. <laughs> So while while uh, she is uh, dreaming or in her coma or whatever, her uh, we state. smash cut to uh, Jersey, the Jersey Correctional Facility, mm-hmm. and we meet One Eyed Jack, who apparently with one eye uh, can see very clearly on a small analog television screen that's blocked by a metal mesh. That that red-haired woman is the blonde woman he tried to kill uh, Thank you. six years ago. Thank you. You're welcome. Because I wrote that down, too. I was like, <laughs> I was like wow, he, that one eye is fucking awesome. <laughs> right? It, it, all, all of his focus is now in that one eye. He could probably shoot laser beams out of it now. <laughs> so anyhow. So Mitch's son's name is Todd, and I thought that was horrible. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mitch Mitch is Mitch Hennessy goes to see his son yeah. um who is named Todd and uh I was like, "Uh, that's the mom's choice right there." And <laughs> did you did you guys notice that there was a pair of sneakers hanging on the high line up uh by you yeah, know, somebody his ex wife's place? Uh no. Uh either she's a drug dealer or the person across the street is. Oh, I thought that meant somebody died. Nope. <laughs> That is indicative that uh, there is a drug dealer nearby. Fun fact or interesting it's tidbit. Fun fact, a fun, fun it's fact. not a fun fact. Shut up, Steve. It's an interesting tidbit. Because <laughs> it's a tidbit that's interesting. Yeah. Where is so, Izzy? <laughs> <laughs> so he's trying She's to chopping get... vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> California. Um, so he's trying to give his son a gift and she is having none of it because he has done some time we find out a little bit later uh but she doesn't want him taking gifts from his father because she figures everything his his father ever gives him is stolen Mm -hmm. it's a little unfair i think well i mean if you're a career thief i guess i don't 
see that I don't know if he's made he made a career out of it. I think he's just dumb and makes a dumb mistake and gets caught. Yeah, I don't know though. If you're, if you're the father and you just did time for stealing and shit, I mean, I think you, if you're the wife, you're right to be a little hesitant. True, but do you really? Are you gonna call around to all the bike shops to see if there was any uh, robberies because he, you know, he got his kid a bike? Uh, I don't know. And I, it's pointless because he doesn't boost them locally. As well, if I'm vindictive as fuck, yes, yes, I would do that. So. Okay. Mm. So, so, all right. So we can establish what his ex is like. He's stupid enough to get himself in jail for four years. I'd be vindictive as fuck, too. Ah, yeah. Jesus well, Christ. she also named her son Todd, so. Yeah, it, it takes sounds like Jackson. And it sounds to me like she must hate her son because she named him Todd. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not taking his side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah and and then this is where we uh, and this is the scene where she's like chopping vegetables and thinks she was a chef in her previous life yes because she apparently knows how to dull the blade of a knife and waste a quarter of a carrot because that's what chefs do right mm-hmm. Fuck, that yeah. bothered so, me so she's not teaching home ec so obviously that's, that's off the subject list because yeah. at first she can't get her shit together. She cuts her finger while she's trying to cut a carrot. And then when she starts, oh, I know how to, at first, at first she had the right technique. And then she just starts slamming the fucking blade down on the uh, chopping block. And I'm like, you're killing that knife. You're <laughs> ruining the blade. Oh. Yep. And wasting know. like quarter of a carrot. <laughs> and then they start throwing her like fruits and vegetables to like cut really quick and then she fucking stabs a tomato against the wall she's like it's a chef thing uh, chefs do that yeah yeah <laughs> i mean chefs chefs do do that because i think about 80 percent of them have records <laughs> well yeah because usually you take food safe when you're on the inside it's one of the one of the courses you can take yeah are you saying that gordon oh, yeah. ramsay has done time i wouldn't put it past him i mean you hear I mean, how he swears yeah no shit <laughs> I, I think he was at Oz. <laughs> no, no, Gordon Ramsay. I'm talking about he's he's the Swedish one, right? The, the Swedish chef. He's done. Uh, he's done time. <laughs> Wait a second. Flirty, 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 I will cut you. Hey there, chef. It's me. <laughs> oh, flirty, 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 flirty. Remember that time we did five up at San Quentin? <laughs> oh, burger, 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 burger. <laughs> blurgy blurgin larceny oh you really filled up those arm sleeves <laughs> hey you're like wow man it's me i'm here to join the party <laughs> oh hey janice <laughs> it's great you wow. hired the whores <laughs> where's the band at i need some coke <laughs> gary oldman <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so, hey, hey, it's me, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dwarf. I'm a dwarf, too. What did you do? <laughs> Good God. Anyhow. What just uh, happened? We get, well, let's let's get back to Long Kiss Goodnight. Uh, yes. We get to meet uh, one of our big baddies in Greg Bierko, a.k.a. fake Tom Cruise from Scary Movie 4. Uh, also a f- uh, fake Lister from the American Red Dwarf pilot. And evil uh, and and opponent of Russell Crowe and Cinderella Man. Mm-hmm. Oh, and star uh, of the Thirteenth Floor. Oh yeah, he is in that, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but his name's Timothy in this movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> you got a thing with names, Steve? <laughs> that bad. No, no, I, I'm just back. Back Timothy. to long kiss. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he does. He does. Uh, get there is a quick slam on Baywatch nights. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember your your friend One Eyed Jack? Yeah, he's doing time up in Jersey. Well, not anymore. He escaped after he saw what they said something on television that disturbed him. Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, I saw it too. It's called Baywatch Nights." Get to the fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie. I love yes. this movie. Every fucking line and syllable. Mhm. Mm, the 870 second syllable I'm not crazy about. <laughs> Shut up. So, uh, <laughs> we just, and it's just a, the briefest of introduction because after that, uh, he, he kills the guy he's torturing 
mm-hmm. and uh, they just head on off to uh, Samantha and her daughter uh, learning to ice skate. Yeah, and, you know, and Gina Davis turns into a real grump. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Kids yeah, need you, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking, oh, yeah, she's being so rough on her and blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay it's with just, it. It's <laughs> a sprained wrist. I mean, it's no wow. big deal. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shut up. It's fine. Life is pain, it's B. Fine. That's right. You yeah. just live with it. You live with it. She'll be fine. Kids break their wrists all the time. She's tough. Yeah. You tough, uh, right? Uh, uh, okay, guys. Whatever you say. <laughs> Shut up, Brandon. Leather up, <laughs> girly pants. Mm-hmm. Man, Sapporo beer makes me a mean drunk. Good Lord. <laughs> what? They're our sponsor. Oh, God damn it. Anyhow. Um, yes, this is where we get that fantastic life is pain speech from, uh, <laughs> Davis to her six year old. <laughs> yep. I, I think she's eight. Oh, eight. Sorry. Eight. Yeah. Oh, NVM. It's fine. <laughs> it's, Pra- practically I, a woman at this point. Again. You know what? <laughs> Steve, that deeply disturbs me that you said that <laughs> <laughs> on many levels. <laughs> Kids need that sort of thing. They need to be told, suck it up. <laughs> you know Officer, Life Officer lessons. she was practically a woman. <laughs> she was eight. <laughs> Good God. Oh, nail there, Epstein. <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve. All I'm saying is it was time for her to learn some life lessons. Number one, you were the one that wanted to fucking ice skate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I thought you said you were the one that wanted to fuck an ice skate. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <sighs> wow, Brandon. Wow. Listen. Every time. <laughs> First off, the logistics. I mean, I mean, do you just run it along the blade, or is it like oh that little... Oh, my fucking Christ. Listen, is that, I, is, that, I, is that a hockey thing? I think my opinion <laughs> can be summed up with one line, and that is, of course, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> The moon landing was faked. Uh, yeah, Stanley Kubrick filmed the moon landing. The evidence is in The Shining! <laughs> so, she breaks her wrist. We find that out. Gina mm. Davis feels bad about it, but she doesn't have a whole lot of time to feel bad about it because One-Eyed Jack shows up at her door with a group of carolers at gunpoint. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love this. This is... Oh. God. The gun, it's not just a shotgun. It's got like a fucking mortar launcher on it, too. Yeah. Which, I, I have that ran down like, I, is this a fucking grenade launcher and shit, too? Which, which she blocks with the fridge door? Of course. I think that oh, was and just And he blows a, a shotgun, hole in the side though. of the house? Well, that was the mortar. Uh, I think he yeah. was trying to kill her with the straight shotgun shells when she blocked that with the fridge. Because I thought, because when it showed him, like, the utter destruction he co- he could cause, I was like, what? <laughs> and she, and she, uh, her, she takes her poor child with her broken wrist and throws her throws out, her the out the hole. Yeah. Yes. into the treehouse. Oh. So. Oh, but then, but then the coup de grace. How does she kill One-Eyed Jack? A with a pie. Pie to the a face. fucking pie. And then... Murders him and then finishes the job with the least convincing neck break I've ever seen. Well, she she stands yeah. over top of him, does the dim mock, and then fucking breaks his neck. Yeah, there wasn't even like a twist. She just kind of pulled. She just kind of hung onto his head, and then the camera <laughs> cut away. It's no, delightful. no, wait, 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 guys, 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 back to the pie. How the fuck did she kill him with a pie? It was a glass pie plate. Okay, even... so so it cut up his face a bit. That's cool. Yeah. Well, then, okay, Steve, she didn't kill him with the pie. She subdued him with the oh, pie. Oh, ki- like gave him a concussion or something it's, then? Yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. It, wasn't that what the movie concussion was about? <laughs> Everybody taking <laughs> that, a pie That's the why face. they don't make helmets out of pies now. <laughs> Wait, that seems even worse. Yet the best part about this is I'm actually I'm watching the Ohio State Michigan game right now while we talk. You son of a bitch! I'm missing it for this. So God damn it! You're welcome, Steve. 
All right, so we skip to the end. So at this point, I wrote down that the husband should be more freaked out than he is. Yeah, oh, he yeah. is. He he's definitely in the uh, the category for most nonplussed reaction uh, for the manoses this year. Oh, we well, need to and, make that a new award. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and also uh, Mitch Hennessy is at the front door when this is all going down too. So. First time I watched this, I was like, "Oh shit, is he in on this?" Oh yeah, well, we gotta, we gotta, we ran past that. Uh, Mitch is on his way to to see Samantha mm. because they find a, a treasure trove of stuff that she left behind in her old life as Charlie Baltimore uh, from an old rental that she had had, and the lady didn't. Uh, throw any of this stuff out so he's going to visit her to basically ask for more money so yeah. he can you know line his pockets and what do what he thinks is just helping her uncover what her old boring life was yep so that's when she's like all right so let's go sam jackson this is a road movie now yeah <laughs> Yes, this this movie has a whole lot of elements that go into other movies quite well. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it, it, I thought it was going to be sweet and romantic. Nope. I thought it was going to be a buddy road movie. Nope. <laughs> nope. Action badassery. God damn right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they're on the road. Yes, and they're not talking about the linen because he he's singing along with uh, "Really Want to See You Tonight," and he mm-hmm. he keeps getting the lyrics wrong while he's checking out the tits of joggers. <laughs> I, I will say this about the dialogue, uh, or at least the incidental dialogue, not the intense dialogue, but just the exchanges between her and Sam Jackson, her mm-hmm. and the husband. That all had a very real conversational feel to it. Now, when mm-hmm. she's talking to Timothy, she says some outlandish shit. <laughs> well, that's that's Shane Black. Yeah, when it starts getting to the intense action stuff, the dialogue, I think, gets less realistic. Yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> I'm going to watch you die, bitch. Like, <laughs> stuff like that. You're going to die screaming. Yeah. Am I lying? Am I, am I telling the truth? Yeah. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> so n- we didn't cut up ourselves. Next, no. <laughs> we get our smash cut to Brian Cox. Uh, oh, my God. I quote this every other week. I oh. swear to Christ. Well, then go ahead, Steve. Oh, well, <clears throat> let me uh, let me get my Brian Cox accent on. Get into it. <clears throat> yep. mm-hmm. That dog has been eating its asshole for the last three hours. I assure you, anything that was there <laughs> requires an hour at most. Whatever's there is either gone for good or there to stay. We do. do but I, I there was a fun Easter egg when they, they when Charlie... Or Samantha, I guess, still at this point, and Mitch hole up at the uh, that that Dutch motel. Uh, and what movie is on the television? I don't remember. The Long Goodbye. Oh, I've never seen it. It's a, it's an old uh, a gumshoe type movie with uh, Elliot Gould. Mm, no. Oh, well, that's the. Uh... What do I need a girl for? I got a cat. Yep, pussy's pussy. <laughs> no, no, never, never uh, I knew it was Ellie Gould, but I've never seen that movie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all right. It's a good movie. It's, fu- it, it, I mean, it's not uh, terrible, uh, but it's, it's got a very, uh, I got, they, they're trying to go for like a noir type feel, but in a modern mm-hmm. setting. And by modern, I mean the late seventies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at this point, they get in touch with Brian Cox, right? And he uh, reveals that she's she works for the U.S. government. Yes. And her name is Charlie Baltimore. Um, and this is also where uh, we find out that Mitch does that bit where he sings his routine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because when they're in the hotel room and he's like, putting my pants on the bed. <laughs> And she and she's looking at him and she's like and he's like oh don't mind me this is something that I do you know I, I honestly I thought this was going to come back as a more important plot point later like it it, it does happen a few times but and they do have Ooh, uh, the music well, cue uh, for that for the song that kind of in 
is more well known for that. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Well, and it does come up sort as of. a as a plot device when they get to the train station where they're meeting up with Brian Cox. Mm-hmm. Put my gun in the right. Well, like, nah, like nah, put nah. my keys in the left pocket. Yeah, put my gun nah. in the right. But I mean, even if we didn't have him singing that part, we still see that he's putting a gun in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, but this makes it fun, and that's what Renny Harlan is all about. I, I'm not fun. saying it's not fun, but I'm just saying it's weird that it doesn't actually come up as like a major plot thing later. Because it's they establish like a quirk, and you think like, oh, they established this weird quirk. It's going to figure into the plot somehow, like amnesia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they they use it a few more times. Like they, they use them at the train station. Yeah. Uh, they use it later when they get to Daedalus, and uh, by Daedalus I mean one of the other baddies, not the you know the uh, Greek myth uh, whose kid flew too close to the sun. <laughs> So anyway, moving on, moving on. <laughs> yeah, so they they meet Brian Cox there, and uh, but then they get they get uh, they get jumped by the villains, Craig Bierko and his his merry men. Oh, and he oh, he try, he goes up to because he wants to see that she doesn't really recognize him, and he just does his uh, kind of like I don't know shitty put on where he's charming and stuff like that. And it's where I put, why couldn't he have been a good sociopath? (laughs) Yeah, because as soon as he starts talking like that, I'm like, I'm sorry, even if I don't know who I was before and this guy starts talking to me like this, he's a villain. (laughs) Like, I don't think, like, I don't think his nice guy act was very convincing. (laughs) Oh, I, I don't know. He was affable enough and he definitely came across as a very... You know, uh, guy trying to pick up in a bar. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure Craig Bierko has secured plenty of times in the his, day. With his, probably. His I mean, he stare was I'm, a little too long. <laughs> I don't know. He didn't come across as a Duke lacrosse player to me. Yeah, that's all I'm <laughs> saying. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I wrong? No. Okay. So it was a big shootout. Um, but they managed to escape, and then Brian Cox comes by and saves the day. Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow, slow it the fuck down. No, no, we have to get through this movie. We're like an hour <laughs> okay, into this. Okay, shoot, shoot out and curves. They go running up the top of the train station to the third floor. Grenades up there. Oh shit! We have to route run the explosion of this grenade. Gah, 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 through the window. Yeah, Three they, stories down they, into a fucking ice pond. Gah, 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 gah. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! It's cold. Run to the parking lot. Oh shit, we're screwed! <laughs> Get in the car! My dog's eating his asshole! <laughs> okay, thanks, Steve. See, see how long that took? Like a minute. <laughs> so they out, they outran a grenade fireball. Let's just let's just make sure we mention that again. Yes. <laughs> and by, by jumping out a window and shooting the thin ice that Gina Davis just so happened to notice as they were walking into the train station. So the next bit is uh, that they've actually met up with Brian Cox, and mm. he is—they're—they're. They're, he's explaining what's going on, and she's tripping out, obviously, because this is fucked up. And how did she know how to use that gun and and escape like that? And she's like, "I, I, I'm in the PTA." Then quit. <laughs> <laughs> Your goddamn government assassin. <laughs> and meanwhile, while they're talking, Sam Jackson is putting on his uh, his outfit from Formula Fifty One. <laughs> yeah, it would and, it would be perfect on Hockey Night in Canada. He could replace somebody. <laughs> hey, I'm good with that. <laughs> he was just missing the kilt. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he starts putting, and then he's he starts like doubting Brian Cox. He's like, no, no, this guy, this guy set us up. Let's get out of here, and they fucking drive off and leave him, leave him there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they drive uh, to David Morse's uh, farm, who from the William Fickner school of like, oh, it's David Morse. Oh, okay, so he's the villain. See, that's I don't get that from David Morse. Oh, really? I, <laughs> I really don't. Uh, I mean, I know he has been villains. I mean, in this and The Rock, but mm. it's it's David Morse. He just mm. he 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 looks like that the fun uncle to hang out with. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he was the bad guy in like 
12 monkeys or suburbia or i i'm just saying i would be 16 duped. blocks everyone remembers 16, that movie, yeah, right? exactly. if i encountered david morse i would be duped i mean sure he'd probably kill me but i would be duped because <laughs> i think he's fantastic he know, is some, fantastic something about the way he's like Oh, baby, I love you. I was like, nope, nope, nope. Get away, get away, get away. It's his... You and me, we were, uh, (laughs) you know... You pursued me. Uh, Uh, But but Sam Jackson does get a boner from Gina Davis saying that she knows that David Moore sits down when he pees. Yeah, and uh, we also get his uh, artistic uh, ability on display uh where brian <laughs> yeah. cox finds him uh yep. because okay. of the information that was located uh below the address to a topless bar and next to the drawing of a man's penis it's a duck it's a duck not a dick see wait can i just say how did he catch up to them that quickly i'm guessing a goddamn wasn't... cia assassin he can yeah. do anything no wasn't he on foot <laughs> uh brendan either Hitchhike. somebody is dead Dead at the side of the road, or he just carjacked somebody because there's no way he walked. Brian like, fucking Cox does not walk. Like, it, 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 if you see Brian Cox on the side of the freeway, are you picking him up? Of course you are. Of course, yes. I You've would seen love... Manhunter, and you're still picking him up. Mm-hmm. I would love to see. I would love if he had never actually gone there, and then like you go through the whole movie, and then you see a scene of him finally getting to the farm, and be like. <laughs> Damn it! Where are they? <laughs> it's like uh, one... on the Larry King show, he kicks open a door. You son of a bitch! <laughs> um, okay, time to do, go do some more adamantium experiments. And it's funny because <laughs> at, it's at this point where Sam Jackson goes, "Are you fucking William Shatner or something? Calm down." <laughs> <laughs> so. uh... Uh, Samantha gets water wheeled, uh, which is oh, I thought my... it was Wonderwalled. <laughs> no, she gets water wheeled. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like waterboarding, but you get strapped to a water wheel when it happens. So wait, you're saying that David Morse turned out to be a villain? Yes, what? I was. I was as surprised as you guys. I really, <laughs> I was shocked. Oh, uh, every God. time I rewatch it, I think it's going to be different. It never is. Right? He's just so fucking charming. Right? It's the eyes. It's it's the eyes. They're just... Uh, I could look into them all day. Like, they're soft, supple eyes, mm. but they're also not creepy like Craig Birko. And that, 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 uh, that silvery, salty pepper hair, just uh, a dream. Mm. Um, okay, so while Nathan's thinking about that, uh, <laughs> can we talk about the folksy uh, torture device he has? The, the water the wheel. Water wheel. We I know. Were. It's, it's we such, were talking about it, Brandon. Catch up. It's such a great, like, <laughs> it's such a great, like, <laughs> I don't know. I just found it very folksy. And this, yeah. all of this causes more damage to Gina Davis's cerebellum uh, mm. because she's, you know, the oxygen denied to her brain because she's being drowned. Uh, and then she starts to remember everything. And she say she also sees dead Brian Cox in the water, right? Uh, and and in her remembering everything, she remembers yeah. he has everything, everything. He has a gun uh, strapped next to his penis. Mm-hmm. So she grabs Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these things oh, are really different boys. when Izzy's not around. And uh, she comes, uh, They when David Morris brings her back up, she fucking murks him. Mm-hmm. Pop, pop, pop. Yep. He, but not before he says something really creepy about, I love a woman's face when she's in pain. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he, the, like he the, the miracle dis- of childbirth. Yeah. yeah the, he, oh my god, that was so weird. Yeah, <laughs> the beauty of childbirth. I was like, oh god, <laughs> shoot him quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, somebody kill him. <laughs> and this also, is where we also villains... go ahead. I was just say, why did the villain strip Sam Jackson naked? I I don't know. Um, okay, that was, maybe that was they had weird. heard rumors and they wanted to you know <laughs> make sure for themselves. Turns out it's really small. Huh, I thought it'd be down to his knee, at least. Um, <laughs> it's almost so, a vagina. 
<laughs> uh, we all this is we do also find out that um, not Samantha Kane, but Charlie Baltimore uh, mm. apparently had a little <laughs> with Timothy. Yeah, well, I think he's like the father of her child, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, that... I believe, I believe it's they bumped pelvises. Yes, and he, he says, "Best night of your fucking life." <laughs> Wait, was this right after the shower scene? Because I remember there being a shower scene in this movie. Right after this is that's just before because once she breaks free of the water wheel and saves Sam Jackson, then maybe... we go. Oh, sorry. Good. <laughs> I, I remember you said uh, I. I got confused again about I said the water, water wheel. wheel. Yeah. Um. And so then we go to we're going to Atlantic City, fellas. Uh. And this is where she, uh, Gina Davis, is dyeing her hair because now she's full on Charlie Baltimore. And my God, I want to see a battle between her and Sarah Connor. Did you say a bath? Battle. Well, that too. I mean, yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, well. I heard bath too. I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> wait, wait what, did right. you, what did you originally say? I said battle, but a bath between her and Sarah Connor. See, like, T2. I'm hearing bath both times still. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, do you mean about like a battle between the two? Yes, a battle. Oh. Oh, okay, okay, because <laughs> you're saying bath like four or five times. I think I'm just <laughs> cutting out on your guys' end of the audio because I just. Like, no, no, not bath. Bath. I'm like, what? But I, <laughs> battle. Battle. There we go. And it's not about, it's a boot. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> That's our word, Steve. You don't get to use it. I gave him permission for this one time. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, wait, hey, that's our word too, eh? Sorry, sorry, sorry. You have to say sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's better. <laughs> yeah, so is this where she's like she kind of comes on to Sam Jackson a little bit? Well, a little bit because he's uh, his his wound is seeping yeah. because she's patched him up and she needs to change the band aid and she flashes him and rips the band aid off. Which yeah. you know what? I would put six or seven bandages upon me if if that was going to happen. So. So Canadian healthcare is that all covered with the nurses like flashing you as they pull the bandages and oh, st- catheters Steve, or it's, whatever? It's a fantastic place to live. You've got to, God you've got it. to come here, Steve. Some of the strip clubs double as hospitals. Good, actually, fun. You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. I got to start that down here in uh, in America. Yeah, you got to start that is... in Utah, where it will be widely accepted. <laughs> Yeah, just, absolutely. Just to peel back the the curtain on our <laughs> recording. Uh, after I'm done this, I'm probably going to hit up our legal weed stores because they're having a Black Friday sale. <laughs> Son are? of a bitch! Yes. Holy shit! Black Friday into Green Saturday. Am I right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Into be... fuck. I need to lay down Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, Charlie Baltimore calls Mr. Perkins, her old boss, and is basically like, hey, guess what? I'm not dead. Uh, what's my next job? Like, well, I guess uh, come in for debriefing. But we find out Mr. Perkins is in cahoots with, with? Uh, Craig Bierko. I'm sorry, Timothy. Timothy. And mm. all the bad guys. Mm-hmm. What? That can't be. What? Maybe this will be explained no, later. No. Um, and this is where I think <clears throat> Gina Davis and Sam Jackson are like having their arguments and uh, uh, she uh, she goes into town right because she finds out that uh, that this little this little keychain that she gave to her daughter mm-hmm. um, that uh, someone's gonna come after it because it has a little it has a key for a safe uh, right. safe deposit box or a locker uh, yeah. that has like apparently a ton of you know money passport and money and passport stuff. secret documents and whatnot. Yeah, so she goes to, like, she goes back home and has a really funny confrontation with a kid and tells him, like, if he says anything, (laughs) she'll she'll shoot him in the fucking face or something. And then he immediately... Okay, that's Russell from before, the kid who was trying to steal cigarettes at the uh, holiday party. And she says, if if I catch you smoking again, uh, they'll never find the body. You understand? He's like, yes, Miss Kane. Immediately pisses his pants in the scene, too. 
Yes, because later, when she shows up this time, he's smoking again, mm-hmm. and she's got a fucking assassin's rifle with her, and she takes the cigarette from him, smokes it, gives it back, and says, if you tell anybody you saw me, I'll blow your fucking head off. Yeah. Yeah. Parenting. I, I, yeah. <laughs> And then, yes, he pisses his pants. And then the crazy thing is, so, like, she goes up to her... That's the... um, This is the crazy thing? Yeah, this is the only crazy part. Everything else is fairly normal. Um, (laughs) She goes up to her, like, her house, and she looks in the window, and for, like, a second, I was like, wait, is she... Is her plan just to assassinate her family? (laughs) Well, you know what? She came pretty close to shooting her kid, that's for sure. She yeah. sticks the gun out the so, window, and I'm like, holy fuck, this movie is going to get even crazier. She's using the scope to get a zoomed-in view. Come so, on. She can so she can shoot per- children, I guess. Right. Hashtag child murder, yes, yes. <laughs> Mariah's giant cock. Wait a second. <laughs> now you're just saying things. I, I'm just playing WWTT bingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hold on, I'm going to call it a couple more. Uh, Postal is the worst. Postal is the worst. Okay, let me reach in there. Uh, uh, okay, oh, what does this one say? Uh, follow us on Patreon. Follow us on Patreon. Okay, and, and no bingos yet? No, okay. Check uh, out Podbean. 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 A Podcoin. Podcoin. Podcoin! Podcoin! Bingo! Oh, shit! Oh! This oh. is exciting! Steve, bring up your card. Okay, let me there just take go. a look here. God damn it, Steve. Fun fact is you. Yeah. Yeah. We Decide. have interesting tidbits. You literally wrote over everything with your shit. Sorry, just trying to make the game better. Milos, Borsh. Oh, shit, they're not here. Right. They were detained, right? Fuck, More later. There, me. I got another one. Gi- oh, wait, no, hold on. I got someone to get you out. Just one second, Steve. Oh, yeah? All right, you get back here. Oh, Let shit. me see your bingo card, uh, young man. Mother Superior, what are you doing here? Let me see that bingo card. There's one uh, thing here. Catholics know, it's bingo. Let me see it. Oh, oh really? you're in big trouble. Oh, you're in big trouble. Uh, 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 Mother Superior, there's there's a child uh, d- throwing stuff outside. He's, he's smoking and stuff. What? Oh, you're lucky this time, Steve. <laughs> oh, God. You, Brandon, you if you unleash Mother Superior, she is she is way, way worse than Milos and Borshti. She doesn't stop until blood is spilled. Mm. Oh, that child. Oh, the ha- cat, oh, she just Catholic. got outside. Mm. Mm. She just got outside Ooh. there and uh Ooh. yeah, oh yep, yeah, that's that's Ooh. a hashtag Ooh, child murder. Mm. Mm-hmm. He is wow. He's not recovering from that. There is no breathing going on. Nope. Oh, lock the door, lock the door. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Steve, you, Steve, you're welcome. By the way, yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh God! All right, so Mitch honks the horn <laughs> because yep. yes, Miss Daisy, I be honking. I be honking. <laughs> yeah, so so Sam Jackson's like like playing lookout or whatever, and she she basically tells him if you see any trouble, honk the horn three times, and I'll come come help you. Yep. So she yeah. hears honking three times, runs out. Sees that he's being chased by guys with, like, just shooting fucking machine guns and shit out of a fucking Chevy Blazer or whatever, skating yeah. on the road. And so she straps on some ice skates and chases them across a frozen lake. <sighs> Which made me and... love her even more. Yeah. But then while that's happening, guys, in the church, it's a different story. Because Craig oh. Bierko was there. He fucking puts, like, a gas mask on uh, uh, Gina Davis's like, daughter and then yep. some mom sees him, and he's like, he says, you're about to have 2.4 children. <laughs> Hold the knife Christmas. to, like, her kid's neck. <laughs> Wait, yeah. he's a bad guy? Uh, he's not, yeah, I mean, he looks nice. But those but, but those charming Elijah Wood eyes, I mean. <laughs> Elijah Wood's never played a villain. <laughs> Wait, has Izzy ever watched Maniac? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, she hasn't watched The Trust either or whatever with Nicolas Cage and Elijah Wood. Oh, I think Maniac would be the most horrifying because you are Elijah Wood in that movie and he's she, a murderer. You, she has seen Sin City. She wow. did not care for it. Didn't, did the whole movie? Well, well care, care, care for that bit. Oh, okay, okay. 
she's like, see, I knew it. It's like, yeah, that's good. That, was, that was the first movie where I was like, oh, Elijah Wood is uh, pretty believable in this part. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so, so when we do our Patreon picks, just remember, <laughs> Elijah Wood's IMDb page. All right, well, they get, so uh, so Becky and Long Kiss, good night. <laughs> yeah. uh, G- Charlie uh, saves Mitch by killing a bunch of people in a Chevy Blazer, and the town seems very nonplussed about what just happened. Um, it's Philadelphia, but, dude. It's Philadelphia. It's it's was it Homesdale, New York, or wherever the fuck it's supposed to be. Oh, is I it? Know. I thought it was Philly. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, no, no, it's in New York. Is it New York? Okay. Right. Yeah, whatever. Scranton, but, uh, Pennsylvania. So then she gets the call that uh, uh, Timothy has their daughter, and it's like, oh shit, we need to find out where they are. How are we yep. going to find that out? <laughs> phone company yeah we're gonna hijack the motherfucking phone company i gotta say they- i do really like that scene oh yeah where they all they- in chet speaking <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> please hold yeah they like reroute uh the holiday into the phone company and then uh, t- uh trace the call for when craig Birko calls and find out that they're in niagara falls yes yeah. project honeymoon <laughs> yeah. Okay. Project Honeymoon. That's why some it's called of, Project Honeymoon. Yeah, it's like some sort of false flag thing where they're they're gonna stage a terrorist attack and and, and to make it look like the ninety three <laughs> World Trade Center bombing. Yeah, somebody says yeah. blame it on the Muslims, naturally. Yeah, yep. four thousand people dead. Blame actually, it on the Muslims. Raise I, budget for I, security. I, oh, I, Patriot I, Act. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Noted. Fucking wow. Oh. Oh, trust me, 2001, Steve was right there (laughs) (laughs) with this like, oh, I've seen this before many times. They even even mention that the World Trade Center bombing in 93 was an inside job. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, whoa. Yep. (laughs) I I wrote down, I was like, this Uh. is definitely a clip in in the movie. Like this clip in the movie is has to be in one of those 9-11 conspiracy videos. I would be be. shocked. (laughs) I would be shocked if it was not in at least one of them. And then we get, uh, this is when we get the reveal about uh, her daughter being Timothy's. Yeah. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Which I think we kind of figured the whole time, I think. What? I, I mean, I kind of thought it was his. <laughs> when it yeah, wasn't maybe. David Morse's kid, I was like, oh, it's probably that guy's kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I knew it wasn't the real husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we she was pregnant with her. They they established yeah. that. Yeah, I I figured it wasn't One Eyed Jack, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't Mitch Hennessy's. <laughs> <But Craig Birko, laughs> at one point, it was just like somebody get my little bitch. <laughs> and that's exactly yeah. yes. Yeah. Can you bring in my my little bitch? And then another line he where he says it. is like, "Do you mind if I take a look at your fucking eyes?" <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. But yeah, so at this point, um I think yeah, they kid they kidnap him basically at this point, right? Well they that this well okay. So yeah. while they're while she's trying to get away with her daughter at first, uh she gets trapped down in the basement that's filled right. with kerosene. Yes. Uh and they use the baby alive or baby peas so real or whatever the fuck it's called fills the uh, the reservoir up with kerosene. Wait, no, that's not till later. No, no, this is here. No, this is here. That's not when that's when they're in the freezer. Yeah, cuz yeah, that's but before where get... they're in the freezer, they were trapped and that's when they fill it with the kerosene. Oh, right. So then when almost... they're in the freezer, I fucking they release the fluids. I just yeah. see I didn't catch the kerosene thing, so then later I was like, why is the doll piss flammable? <laughs> that's why it's flammable. <laughs> Made in China. <laughs> because <laughs> they say uh, you know, I smell kerosene or something like that, and it'd be oh. an awful way for a kid to go. Uh, we'll give you 30 seconds to think about it. And then, then she looks at the doll, looks at the kerosene, oh, and then wow. later when the doll pisses, you're like, oh, she filled it with kerosene. Or me. Oh, the doll's piss. <laughs> Gas flammable. <laughs> Good job, Doll buddy. piss hot fire. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's dull, dull space is kerosene. I don't know why I'm Tommy Wiseau all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, it's a real movie film. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she uh, she digs out a bottom the bottom part of the the door in the freezer, uh, mm. so the kerosene will go out and pool near the other 
uh, barrels of kerosene. Yep. Uh, and this is where we get our plot point matches. Your yeah. what? The plot point matches. Because when she left, originally, she gave her daughter matches. Because that's what you oh, do with yeah. eight-year-olds. You give them matches. Yeah, just yeah. for safekeeping. Well, to light a candle, to guide her way home. Exactly. <laughs> And then when she can't get a spark from the uh, from the iron, uh, she's like, "Don't cry, mommy. Here's I keep them there for lighting your candle because she's you know keeping the matches in her cast." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Should we get a dog?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blows fucking everyone to death. It's great. So they bl- yeah, they blow the fucking door off, and it's enough that where Sam Jackson is uh, just about to get shot by Craig Bierko in another room. He <laughs> oh, fucking another blows- room on the third floor of the lodge. Right. Yeah, he blows out the fucking window, and s- not only does he survive the fall, he gets up quick enough to pinpoint precision with a knife at someone's head. And this is oh, where I'm saying. Oh, he also flew through the sign yes, of the hotel. The yeah, sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking incredible. Not even, a, not even an ouch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this is where I noted that fucking Michael Bay and Roland Emmerich need to take notes. This is yes. how it's done. Give Rennie I mean, Harlan another franchise. Give him an Oscar for fuck's sakes. Well, let's not get crazy. I, 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 I'm, I'm supporting it because they mean nothing to me. So, okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I have a note that Timothy is such a misogynist, but I think that just kind of interweaves throughout the entire movie. Um, yeah. he just he says bitch a lot. I don't know <laughs> a lot. <laughs> He's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bitch. <laughs> You know that kid? That's my fucking seed, bitch. <laughs> Let me see that bitch's eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of which, the little bitch, uh, you know, they're trying to escape oh, okay, now. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Caitlin's her name. Caitlin, the little girl. Cat- uh, Caitlin, G- Caitlin Gina Davis bitch. is like trying to shoot everybody. And she's like, quick, hide somewhere. And yeah, so... And so shit kid truck. goes and hides in the tanker that's about to be blown up for a terrorist act. Because, yeah. yep. you know, cool, cool dark place, I guess. So Mitch almost, almost makes it to, to help Cathead. Uh, but he gets captured and he gets stuck in a car in the back of a trailer, which they're going to use to... Uh, and, oh, and there's a dead body in there, too, uh, of a Muslim chap who they're going to frame for all of this. Are we caught up yeah. now? Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, so uh, she she does she carjacks the the transport truck that they're gonna drive into the middle of town and cause this destruction. Uh, the guy who's driving the truck messages Greg Bierko and says, uh, "She got me, sir. I'm hurt real bad. I think I'm dying. Continue dying." <laughs> <laughs> Love that line. Yeah, Gina Davis pulls a Terminator 2 on a truck driver. Yep. Yeah. Get out. It just keeps yep. getting better and better. Unfortunately, though, uh, the, the truck doesn't have any brakes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so then she has to pull another Terminator 2 by sliding that bitch a good kilometer into the middle of a bridge. <laughs> the truck that has her child in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, she bumped her head. We find yeah. out later. I'm like, bitch, I, I li- you're dead. <laughs> I like where she's like, suck my dick every last motherfucking one of his. <laughs> better, better than f- fucker fuck off from Showgirls. Oh, them better, better, words. better than G.I. Jane either. <laughs> oh, no way. That's my favorite yeah. part of that movie. <laughs> it's the only part of that movie. As far as I'm concerned. So Charlie and Timothy get into a knife fight, and he's only got a three-inch knife. (laughs) Don't worry, you'll feel me. (laughs) And then Sam Jackson shows up, and he's like, you call that a knife? This is a motherfucking knife! And he's still alive. I love that. (laughs) Oh, so here's the thing, though, guys. He wasn't originally supposed to be. 
Oh, really? So I thought I'd save this for when we got to this part, but I'll tell you a little story I read here. Um, Originally, Sam Jackson's character, when he gets shot in the chest, now I'm not sure if he's supposed to be be right away in that scene or later, uh, spoiler alert, when they're in the car, but Mm -hmm. he was 100% dead in the original version um they did it they went to a test screening and somebody got up out of their seat and literally just yelled you can't kill sam jackson so <laughs> rennie harlan i'm guessing what his reaction was okay i won't do it in the future either <laughs> <laughs> deepest bluest my head is like a shark's fin <laughs> make sure you watch my next movie i'm a bad little director See, my note of still alive was actually directed towards Timothy because oh. he gets oh, yeah. thrown down uh, into the water, the icy cold water of Niagara Falls, and still emerges on the shoreline. Oh, okay, yeah, no, sorry, I, I, but the Sam Jackson thing is true though. That's crazy. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that is an interesting tidbit that I was unaware of. Yeah, it's a tidbit that's interesting because mm, it's a tidbit that's interesting. That's right. That's right. Mm. So right. Craig Mirko's still alive. Yes. Uh, but, oh, yes. Don't forget the guy who falls out of the helicopter on fire. Oh, oh well, yeah. you can't. <gasps> What's that? Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, the, she saves Cathead, um, and then uh, she's like, you need to go, sweetheart. Uh, it's a bomb. You have to run. Because the, the government is not coming to save her at all. Mm-mm. Um, and, uh, Sam Jackson roars to life and that's right. You can't kill me. Motherfuckers. Yeah. He, yeah. Fucking, he hulks <laughs> up. Yep. Yeah. Just because you shoot me in the chest, you think that'll keep me down? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, uh, as he's driving to, to save them, uh, she realizes that Greg Birko is still alive and he's shooting at her from a helicopter. She mm-hmm. takes her the, the knife, uh, slices one of the lights that's set up as the Christmas uh, holiday cheer lights or whatever, oh, uh, oh, oh. which apparently the guy who's on fire acts as a counterweight. Pulls her up, she grabs his gun, and then kills Timothy, and is like, die screaming, asshole. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Uh, Fucking amazing. amazing. Yeah, they make it to, uh, they make it out, and uh, it's where we get to the little, little finale here. Uh, I believe he, she, does it, does he ask, he asks her, are you okay? And she's like, are you stupid? (laughs) (laughs) And then, and then, so he, he's going to be fine. He's, the ambulance is on the way and everything. But then she, she gets a call from the president on her phone in the car. Oh, they, they smash cut to it. That's, yes. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it is a little jarring. Yeah. She's like, well, Mr. President, it was it was no big deal. I'm like, what is this, a fucking, like, like another episode of the A-Team or something? Like, Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 but she turns dun, dun, down the job dun, dun. To, yeah, uh, a teacher. to work for the she government. She likes being a teacher. Yeah. Well, because she had the, the key to all the money and the passports and stuff yes. like that now, so she's fucking gloated. <laughs> yep. And She's, uh, she's drunk? <laughs> yeah, well, that too. But, that too. You know, she can handle um, it. But uh, we do get that that fun little send off uh, where uh, Mitch is on Larry King live, and we yeah. find out that Mister Perkins uh, is being tried for treason mm-hmm. uh, in in a like this, you know quick wrap-up thing, uh, mm-hmm. and fucking, he is wearing the best Herb Tarlick suit I've ever seen. <laughs> Only the finest couch upholstery was exactly. used in that suit, and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's like green and yellow plaid. Yeah, and he can't resist the dad joke at the end, where he <laughs> says he's frank and earnest with women. In Chicago, I'm frank, and in New York, I'm earnest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and his wife and his son are watching at home jaws on the floor because you know what the the dad who was a fuck up and got jammed up and went to prison for stealing bonds from the police evidence locker is now mm. a national hero 
I get the well, national hero part, but I like to think of it as them just being like, you know what? He's on Larry King. He's not so bad. Yeah. No, it's like, oh my God, your dad was Samuel L. Jackson the whole time. Oh, that's M. Night Shyamalan's The Long Kiss Goodnight. He's a goddamn chameleon. <laughs> and we get one final parting shot where Charlie kills a, a cricket with a, a throwing knife. Because teachers yeah. do Still that. waiting for the sequel. Rennie Harlan, make that shit happen. Please. Uh, well, the longest kiss goodnight. I've got bad news for you guys. Hmm? What? They tried to do it in 2007, and what? it was ultimately canceled. What? Aww. Yeah, so what? it doesn't look like no. it's going to happen. What? No. Well, now the little girl's all grown up. She could be played by, I don't know, Eliza Dushku or something. Mm. Sure. Nobody else? All right. I'm down. <laughs> I'm okay with that, yeah. Um, but anyway, the yeah, so that's the movie. Um, I mean, I I think it's pretty obvious everyone liked it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Watch it. It's uh, it's Rennie Harlan. It's ridiculous. And it's entertaining. So take that as it were. And uh, with that, we are going to take a brief break. I think so. We'll be right back. What were they? What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. What were they thinking? And we're back. (laughs) Nathan? Uh, Yes, Brendan? Steven, it's time for a very special point on this show, which we like to call the low haiku. Nathan, what is the low haiku? The low haiku is the point of the show where we take 17 syllables and perfectly sum up the movie. We just spent uh, over an hour and a half talking about haiku who yeah it's like a low haiku first? well steve, steve is our guest so we can we can i think steven can be, uh, okay. start us off all right well gentlemen i was actually going to take a little twist on this if you don't mind in honor of this incredible movie we've been watching <clears throat> are you going to kiss us good night dun, 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 dun. mitch helping charlie with her amnesia dun, 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 dun. found out she's a spy dun, 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 dun. Somebody tell Perkins and Timothy that they about to die. Cause this movie's a bad motherfucker. Welcome. It's NPR. It's NPR. It's NPR. The sponsors are not gonna like hot, that. Too coming in hot. Too hot. Oh, We're my sponsored by the we, Gun Corporation. We 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 appreciate the effort mm-hmm. and the energy, but it's mm-hmm. a bit much for NPR. Um, that segment is brought to you by the Marvin Berry Memorial Service. Oh. I would like to apologize to Dave's Potato Chips. Yes, the softest potato chips. Want a crunch? Don't get Dave's. So, uh, uh, Brandon, would you like to... Uh... Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. And keep in mind, this is based on some misinformation I had, which was corrected when we recorded this episode. Okay. <clears throat> Gina shooting, folks. Doll piss be flammable, yo. Wonder wall torture. Wow, that was nice. Uh, so many things wrong with that, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Glad yeah, we were yeah. able to, to fact check that. Well, for well, you. well I, 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 I was. I knew Wonder Wall was wrong, but the other one I okay. believed in 100%. Wall to wall action. A great Christmas movie, too. Gina Davis, hot. 
<laughs> yes, gals, yes. She was quite fetching. <laughs> mm hmm. Gollum. <laughs> Gollum? Oh Gollum's, Gollum's here too? too? Gollum. Gollum. Zaps. Oh. Flesh of what's the devil. This is, okay. this is creeping me out. All right, well, let's uh, see if we can get ourselves Whoa! out. Whoa! Ah! Welcome back, everybody. It's busy Bye. after the hour. It's 12 degrees outside, so put on your sweaters. <laughs> I'm am I dead right? inside. <laughs> well, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the point on the show where we have talked about this movie. We've given our opinion on this movie, but what do we all say? Well, we always say... Don't take our word for it! <laughs> yeah. Yes, don't take our word for it. Uh, don't. Although, you might, because this one's got some good ratings, despite the fact that it is bonkers. It's got... um, And it's, it's the same, almost. Yeah. Uh, critics have it at 69%, and the audience <laughs> has it. The, all right, Steven. It is pretty funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the audience has it. The, the audience decided to bump it up a grade and uh, have it at 70%. 70% positive mm-hmm. reviews. So let's uh, let's dive into some of these here. Um, so the, fir- the first one I have for the critics here, I wrote this down, uh, is actually a negative one. From uh, Jonathan yeah. Rosenbaum of the Chicago Reader. And he says, Frankly, if I had to see another Harlan Davis movie again, not Harley Davis, that's what I thought it said at first. <laughs> or Harley, I know it's Harley <laughs> Davidson. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> if I had to see another Harley Day, Harlan, fuck. Frankly, take three. If I had to see either, either Harlan Davis movie again, I'd opt for the klutzy unpleasantness of Cutthroat Island over the efficient, if equally stupid, unpleasantness of this 1996 release. He's wrong in so, so many ways. He prefers Cutthroat Island, even though he doesn't like either one. Foolish. Foolish. They're both fantastic. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, You're half oh, oh. right. Oh, I'm sorry. If we replace Gina Davis with, um, I don't know, Johnny Depp in drag, basically we have Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Except Frank right. Langella is a better pirate than Jeffrey Rush. Fight uh, me. I'm, 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 pass. <laughs> David Anson of Newsweek <laughs> writes, The Long Kiss Good Night is the fall's best summer movie. Yeah. yeah. 100% Wait. correct. Um, I, I, I got, I got one I actually like here, even though it's a, a negative review. Okay. Uh, the, it's a uh, Jeff Andrew of Time Out, who's apparently a top critic. Mm-hmm. The only saving graces are Davis's stripped down, mean as a wildcat portrayal of the Uzi toting Charlie and Jackson's engagingly ineffectual turn. Mm, I mean, wait, is that a negative review? It, it, I think he's saying those are the only good. Those parts. are the only two things that are good about the movie. I do. I mean, I mean you know that what, is like ninety percent of the movie. So you know what though, that things. does kind of sum up their characters really well, though. Yeah, yeah. Is Sam Jackson being engagingly ineffectual. I really like that combination of words. Yeah, he's basically like Jack Burton in Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, like he like he shows <laughs> up, kind of distracts, so the real people can start killing people. But he's definitely know. less of a badass than Jack Burton. <laughs> he's he's just as talk as Jack Burton. Okay, so Nick Rogers of the film Yap says, For once, Shane Black's penchant, pe- penchant? penchant for Christmas isn't merely window dressing. He understands the holidays sometimes wearying grenade shrapnel shell shock and how claustrophobically cloistering with loved ones uh, often can only expand the blast radius. That's a positive review, though. Yeah. Well, uh, Dessen Thompson Uh, from the Washington Post, he had a negative review, and it says, there's an excessive amount of excess, a mind-numbingly plurality of firearm battles, vehicular explosions, and brutally frank sexual talk. That sounds like a review for a terrible Michael Bay movie. It, It also sounds like a review that would be on, like, Focus on the Family or the Christian Science Monitor or something. I actually was surprised you didn't say Christian Science Monitor. Uh, Peter Stack of the San Francisco Chronicle. By the way, glad to be out of that city. (laughs) 
Uh, with square-jawed grimaces and big guns, Gina Davis could be a convincing two-fisted bullet-spraying action hero if only she had a convincing movie in which to be one. Fuck Aww. you, Peter Stack. Fuck you, indeed. Uh, the last one here. Oh, uh, uh, hot take. I'm thinking Peter Stack didn't like the uh, Charlie's Angels movie either. <laughs> the new one? <laughs> Uh, the next one is uh, Jeffrey M. Anderson from the Combustible Celluloid. He said, I like the long kiss goodnight. I thought it was a lot of fun, and the dialogue was funny and didn't make me wince in pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a glowing review. Yep. Shall we audience uh, dive into the audience once? Yeah. Okay, so this is the first review from the audience. It's from Maya P., and I like to think of that as Mayor P., but with an accent. Uh, gives it uh, four and a half stars. And the mayor says, good old days with good stories. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. James W. Hmm. Four and a half Brooks. stars. This was classic movie with some of the old school 90s movie lines. You can laugh and joke about these lines all night with friends. <laughs> Four and a half stars. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. That's so got- wholesome. <laughs> I got one here from uh, Donald A. Actually, well, actually, this one's actually really recent. Uh, Donald not, A. Trump. Possibly. Mm. Uh, not sure why the mediocre reviews. Great writing, a great female protagonist, nasty villains, and witty dialogue make this one fun film and one of the best action movies I've ever seen. June 16th, 2019. Um, okay, so this one's from Gary T. And he gives it four stars. Okay. I have to step back for the first part of this. Okay. Wow. 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 O-N-W? Just seen this movie for the first time and think that this is such a great movie to watch. It's got a good cast of actors slash actresses throughout this movie. I think that Brian Cox, Craig Birko, Patrick Malahide, Samuel L. Jackson, Gina Davis play good roles slash parts throughout this movie. I think that the director of this mystery slash suspense slash action slash adventure movie had done a great job of directing this movie because you never know what to expect throughout this movie. Dot, 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 dot. Warning! (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> Larry. As, uh, as Owen Wilson would say, wow. 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 Larry W. was a little more concise. Okay. Three stars. Another movie I haven't seen in 20 years. It's <laughs> <What? laughs> the review. Trusting his memory. Yeah. <laughs> this one I think is written by Nathan, actually. I should read this one. It is three and a half stars, so I feel like he may have messed up when he rated it, but it is. Uh, it does say uh, any film that successfully makes Gina Davis look like more of a badass than Sam Jackson has got to be worth watching. If only Harlan had made Die Hard 2 this much fun. <laughs> He's Hot not take. wrong, except for the, you know, not five star rating. I just think, yeah, the Die Hard 2 thing made me yeah. think of you. <laughs> well, Paul G wrote... Uh, it's a duck, not a dick. Possibly one of Sam Jackson's best lines <laughs> ever. Three stars. Yeah, I didn't see that one. That was pretty good. Uh, from Joey S. I saw this in black and white the <laughs> and had to buy it just to watch it in color, but really enjoyed it as far as action movies go. Typical Samuel Jackson character archetype. What? Archetype. <laughs> where, did, where did he watch this in black and white? <laughs> Apparently, he had a bad TV because he had that in quotation marks. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right, I've got one more here. Uh, it's a three and a half star review. They didn't give a name, but it just says, <laughs> "Sorry, it's a little bit typical, but you can enjoy both sides of a woman." <laughs> <laughs> you can. You really, really can. And how. <laughs> well, my last one is from Doug D. Uh, and he gave Fresh. it four stars. Uh, and simply <laughs> writes, what's a ride, super cool? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Doug, not a dick. That's a Doug. <laughs> Doug D. <laughs> Doug D. Doug D. Fresh, his brother. <laughs> All right. Well, those are the reviews. Steve, you have a podcast. I do. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, me and my wife, Izzy, host Everything I Learned from Movies. My wife, uh, Izzy, and I. Collectively known as Stizzy. Stizzy. Yes, yes. Stizzy. We are Stizzy. 
Um, and yeah, we talk about bad to questionable movies, kind of like this podcast, uh, but better. And we also have interviews. Uh, we have our live shows at, uh, oh my God, what's the theater called? Bru- <laughs> Bruvies in Ogden. Uh, game shows, all kinds of like fun stuff we do. Uh, give us a listen at eilfm.podbean.com or hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies. And uh, and if you like what were they thinking, they're usually on there like once a month. <laughs> and I was going to pipe in when you made the comment about but better, but you know, I'm just going to let these kids have their moment. Wait, yeah. what? What are you talking about? <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't say, I didn't say yeah. anything yeah. like okay. that. That's mm-hmm. crazy yeah. better. Yeah. 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 Oh, what? More Wait, what? later. <laughs> hey, don't, he's about to come in, so you don't want to jump on that line. Careful, there. Yeah. Oh shit! Uh, making his way down the aisle from England, ladies and gentlemen, weighing in at I don't know three stone. He's an he's ape, lady. <laughs> he's a Montrose of the Apes. apes. All right, both of you can stop that right now. That'd be great. All right, thank you. Uh, hello, it's your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here. And while I do enjoy the graps, I don't need a wrestling entrance, although wrestling reference secured. Uh, please do tune into my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV, uh, and you can also be friends with me, uh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and friends on Facebook, as well as tweeting me uh, at, uh, on the Twitter. Bach Universe or whatever it is, at Montrose the Third. That's the number 3RD. I'm so glad I could be here, especially after making that run from Homeland Security, uh, leaving those two Eastern Europeans in the dust uh, for me to make my way to Canada and uh, be free uh, with, with you lovely, lovely Canucks. Thank you. More later. And I just want to say, Montrose, I am impressed that you got here on time. You were literally coming in through the door while we read that last of the reviews there. I am British and therefore punctual. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And how? Wait, right. uh, Milos and Borsi are still in the country, right? I, I believe they've been detained uh, by Homeland Security. Uh, but I wasn't sticking around for details as huh, I'm not going back to jail. I'm pretty sure they're in Gitmo by now. We should probably get the lawyers on the line. Maybe we could get Harold and Kumar to help them escape from there. But that movie's trash, I mean. Oh, we the could talk one? about it and have them get Milos and Borsti out. Yeah, the the one you really need to get the help of is Neil Patrick Harris. He he can pull it off. Mm. So. Fair, fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I guess I should uh, give a hint ski a for hint next week. Roo. Yes, please a do. Hint to Rooney. I should note right now as well that um, next week will be our uh, last episode for a couple weeks. Uh, we're <gasps> going to take a little bit of a, uh, a Christmas break. The fuck? Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's how it is, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so next week of uh, December 16th, and I'm hoping I'm getting that day right. Just one second. I don't think you are. Nope. So next week, <laughs> December 19th, uh, will be our uh, last episode until January 9th. So we will also have a uh, we we'll also have a Patreon bonus exclusive episode, though, coming later this month. So be sure to check that out. I think I might just drop that one right on Christmas. So Oh, there you go. That'd be a nice gift to our Patreon patrons. Go. Merry Xmas. Mm-hmm. And to your um, listeners who may be longing for bad to questionable movie reviews, they can head on over to Everything I Learned from Movies. Wait, we we'll, already did that. Stop it. Well, Stop it. We're going to be available during Christmas. We'll have our year-end spectacular and you, our 200th okay. episode being released gotcha. on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fucking amazing. And you, you can vote for it at EILF shit Movies. Plugger. That's everything I learned from movies. Plugging shit. your shit. Shit plugger. <laughs> Anyhow. Good Foley. <laughs> can, you give us that, uh, can you give us that hint? Yes, I'm going to give you the hint. Okay, so continuing the theme of Christmas, of course, for, the next, for next week's uh, movie. Here's your hint. You can count on me. But until then, I would just like to say thank you, Steve. I'm sorry Izzy couldn't be here alongside you, but she is in California, I believe, right? She is at the uh, SFETC Emporium, which would have been a couple of weeks ago. But you can still check us out at Everything I Learned from Movies on God right. Right. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Bad Steve. <laughs> Slap him with a rolled up newspaper. 
No! Mother Good. Superior, no! Down. Down. Sit. Oh, come on, let's wrap this up. Come on. Do you want a treat? Oh, no, I better not do that because my dog will actually get excited. <laughs> okay, this is getting weird. Uh, let's wrap this up because we're over two hours now. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Steve, I just want to say thank you very much for coming once again. Yeah, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Always a joy to have you here. Uh, Nathan, I guess uh, i just going to uh, ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I'm thinking of a question. I can't really think of what to say. This movie was pretty solid. And we had fun today. I said, what were they thinking? <laughs> Blam, blam.